So this afternoon, I'd like to introduce you to Brent Kimura. It's all about Jesus. We are just his tools. Brent Kimura is presently pastoring in the Washington Conference. With over 15 years in youth ministries, Brent is delighted to share experiences and areas of his ministry that may be helpful to you as you follow his leading. Please hear ye him. All right, hey, we're going to sing a couple songs. Maybe this might help you in your kids' church program. So for those of you that uh, were here at this last sec session, wasn't that a great session where you can kind of do some kind of cool stuff? So, um, well, you have to have kids' church to do that. Otherwise, you're going to be implementing that nowhere. Well, I guess you're doing children's stories. So this is a great place to do it in. And so we do a lot of that stuff, too. So, um, But um, I know it's time for lay activities. Um, <laughs> You know, Pastor Victor over there, he's typically sleeping. Uh, we were roommates in Tennessee, and, uh, and he's sleep anyways. So, um, hey, so sing along with us. This is, a, um, this is kind of a really cool song. It's called um, G Needed Time. Jesus, will you come by here? It's, it's a song that calls Jesus towards you. So I know Joey's right here with her uke. Um, if you guys want to bring your ukes, that's fine. So we're playing in the key of F. How's that? All right, here we go, Joey. So it's really simple, right? So... Together, all, otherwise, uh, Pastor, uh, you can have to hear Pastor Victor all by himself, and that's uh, you don't want to hear that, right? Here we go. Jesus, won't you come by here? Oh, Jesus, won't you come by here? Jesus, won't you come by here? And now it is needed time. Right now it is needed time. Jesus, won't you? I'll pray for you. Well, I'll pray for you to come by here. Oh, I'll pray for you to come by here. Pray for you to come by here. Now it is the needed time. Oh, right now it is the needed time. Jesus, won't you come by here? One more time. Jesus, will you come? Jesus, won't you come by here? Oh, Jesus, won't you come by here? Jesus, won't you come by here? Now it is the needed time. Oh, right now it is the needed time. Jesus, won't you come by here? How many of you guys hear the fruits of the Spirit? Yeah, you guys know the song, Fruit of the Spirit song? It's a great song to learn, um, but usually, you know, most adults don't know the fruits of the Spirit, so if you ask them what are the fruits of the Spirit, you know where it's found? Yeah, that's right, Paul 5.22, right? No, I'm just kidding, it's Galatians 5.22. You got it right. Well, the fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the Spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, you got another fruit out there? Any fruits? Watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit is not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I can see some of your mouths moving, but uh, 
<laughs> we got to sing it out. Come on, guys, here we go. We got another fruit? Hey, all right, let's do this one. This is for all the Asian people, okay? All right, so I know um, Pastor Rojas is all about the Spanish people, but we're doing about the Asian people this time, right? So um, there's a fruit in Asia called the durian. You know what durian is? Durian? Oh, that's, that's right, right? Yeah. It smells like um, some people I know. Dirty socks? So this is durian, right? Well, the fruit of the spear is not a durian. The fruit of the spear is not a durian. The fruit of the spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Okay, one more. Let's do the um, Hawaiian pineapple. Well, the fruit of the spirit is not a pineapple. The fruit of the spirit is not a pineapple. If you want to be a pineapple, you might as well hear it. You can't be the fruit of the spirit, because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, so if you want to know the words, that's, these are the words right there. All right. Hey, thank you, girls. All right. Hey, how many of you um, have your own kids' church? Okay. <laughs> One? All right. Used to? All right. So um, you really want to do a kids' church? All right. So um, it takes a lot of work and uh, a lot of big investment. Spend half the church budget. All right. But it's worth it. Hey, let's have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father God, we just um, once again give your lives. It's been a full day, Lord, of learning, but Lord, I ask that you may again open our hearts and our minds to be receptive to your calling, and um, you're so interested in our young people. Thank you for that. Thank you for listening to their, their um, every prayer, and um, Lord, we just, again, present them to your throne, knowing that um, they're safe in your arms. Thank you so much for being just a great and loving God. For all of us, for I pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, so um, maybe I should ask you some questions first, or you can a um, ask me some questions. What, if you were to start a kids' church, what do you want to get out of your kids' church, and what are you, what are you thinking? All right. Yes. Training for leadership? Okay, we'll cover that. Good. Another question, or... What do you want to get out of um, at kids' church? Do you think it's really important to um, kind of go over some purposes, purpose statement, mission statements? Is that important? Yeah? So um, I know that for all of us, when you start a ministry, you're looking at a, you're not just looking at a point in time, you're looking for a long time. Right? Once you start it, you're not stopping. And um, if you leave, it's just continue to go. Right? So that's important. So your beginning helps the end or the unend of your ministry. So um, we're going to begin by just kind of looking at, if you have some pages there. Um, so let me just show you right, right really quick here. Um, this is our kids' church about a year ago. We did something called the Hobo Express, and um, that was our theme. And then you'll see a couple of slides that I'll throw at you. But um, so our theme, anyone um, know the acronym HOBO? Anyone know the acronym? So it was really great to ask my church members every, we do kids' church once a month on the third Sabbath, and we'd always ask them, any hobos in here? And no one, you know, no one raised their hand. But hobo, everyone should raise their hand because the acronym for hobo is homeward bound. Now, any hobos in here? All right? So we just changed a little bit, and we, we called it heavenward bound. So that's where the heavenward bound comes from. So um, that was a kind of a cool way to uh, start off a kid's church. All aboard the Hobo Express. And um, after, after um, here's a flyer. 
we had tickets for the kids. Um, they had passports as they came in, and um, every um, passport, every kid's church, um, they had it punched. You said, it's like going on a train, right? They all lined up, and they, we had conductor's hats on, and we punched them all. And as they came into kid's church, we started our program that way. Um, and um, let's see. After that, uh, oh, here's, here's our set. <laughs> so there's our conductor. So, um, and by the way, see that set? If you want it, you can have it. Just ask me later. I'll give it to you. So it's all, it's all done, ready to go, because we're, we're done with it. So if that's of interest to you. So that was our, one of our sets. Our, another uh, kids' church that we were doing, or this is part of our rules in our kids' church, is um, traveling rules. And so our conductor would kind of go through what was happening and kind of give them some rules as the kids came in. Um, so if you, if you need to use the restroom, um, enjoy the ride. Um, and please, no cell phones. Can you believe little kids bring their cell phones? But anyways, it was, it was pretty cool. All right. Um, so where we were headed, we were headed to the Sea of Galilee. That's our location. Hopped on the train to go to the Sea of Galilee. After the Sea of, Ga after the sea of Galilee, um, our theme was where Jesus walked. And um, we would then focus in the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus walked and what he did when he was walking. So that was our theme for that particular Sabbath day. All right. And um, after our whole um, year was finished, we said, hey, guys, let's actually go ride a real train. And so there is there's our kids' church, and um, that's in Seattle. Um, jumped on the sounder and went for an hour ride, had lunch, and went to the museum, and hopped back on, went back, went back home. So it was a, kind of a cool Sunday. So right now, um, our kids' church, we're doing something called God is Big. And um, this is a, a kind of a new theme that we're doing. We just had like two, two months down. Um, God is Big is kind of a, a cool theme because um, all the things that you saw today, a lot of the lab stuff, we do a lot of lab stuff. So we have a welcome to the lab, and we have a lab table, and we do all those type of fun experiments. Um, and then after that, let's see, um, here's our theme, how God provides. Um, and now we're going to get started into how to design a kid's church. So obviously, I'll just give you some ideas that work for us and um, where we've been in the past. Let's invite God to be with us as we begin. Father, we want to pause again and just thank you that um, as we do kid's church um, in our local area churches that um, you may help us in our thinking in developing a structure. But more than that, Lord, we just want to be people that um, just take the time to be with your kids. So now as we kind of go through the nuts and bolts of um, our kids' church time, we just ask for your presence. For I pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. So um, number one in getting started here is knowing what you want to accomplish. So is it evangelistic? Is it, um, is it for training? Um, is it for worship? And you're probably thinking <laughs> all the above, right? All the above. But those things have to be very purposeful as you get started. Otherwise, um, you sometimes get lost in the, the funness, is that a word? Funness of what's happening. So, um, you know, um, in my experience, I started Kids Church 15 years ago, 16 years ago in Redlands, California, and um, a very big Adventist community. Um, we started with 20 kids, um, and be before a year later, um, well, five years later when I was leaving, we had 220 kids. So um, how do you make it grow? Uh, my philosophy in growth is a little bit different. I feel that whenever God is ready for want more kids to come, he'll bring them in. So we really didn't, we didn't advertise at all. Um, we did some advertising. The way that we advertised was we'd actually go into the community and go to parks and do a kid's church right in the middle of a park and have had lunches, and just any kids out there, they would see the puppets, they would see all the skits, and you know, and they thought, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, and it, it was just by word of mouth. But um, 
one particular time, uh, we were doing, um, back then on TV, ER was a big deal. Remember ER, that show, right? And we had a lot of physicians in this particular church. And so they had all their scrubs. We had a, we had a heart monitor. Um, we had um, um, a ventilator, um, a, l- a literal ventilator, you know, for, from the hospital. So we had all these machines going. Um, we had scrubs on. Um, um, one of our uh, doctors could play the piano amazingly. And so you can hear the ER theme. <laughs> just like the movie. And we'd all walk out, you know, at the door. Um, and we did some pretty cool things. But we noticed... We were having a lot of fun. And the kids, I think they were having fun. But at the end of our session, we sat down. We kind of did some evaluations. And we said, you know, I think we're off target a little bit. I think uh, we were having fun, which is important. Then the kids will have fun. But our spiritual theme was lost. And so we're thinking, do the kids want to go to the hospital? Or do they really want to go to church? You know? Um, so we, we stopped and we said, hey, we have to refocus again. And one of the reasons why was we didn't take the time at the beginning to just remember our purpose um, and the reasons why we were doing our particular kids' church. So every year at um, my present church, um, I take them on a retreat. Um, we typically go out in the, you know, um, since we have beautiful places up in the northwest, you know, we'll sit on a beach house or we'll go to up in the mountains, a log cabin, and just one whole weekend, we'll just go through our entire year of what we want to do, how we want to accomplish it, and um, just go through all the nuts and bolts. And so um, I'm leaving you the last three pages of that flyer you have there. We'll have that so you can actually take that and make it your own and just basically add the names in there, and you're you're, going to be running and going. All right? All right. So the nuts and bolts. Um, number two there under A is um, selecting a ministry team. Now, um, I'm a person who always likes to select my team versus um, people that volunteer. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, that's, that's just me. And so um, I just look around in the church and looking for very specific people that have high interest in kids and also for safety as well, knowing who they are. Um, sometimes people volunteer that um, have sketchy records, I put it that way, right? And it's just hard to say, hey, you can't be part of the program. But sometimes you have to. So um, anyways, the conference will work on, with you on that in regards to background screening. So everyone ha- gets a background screening because you already, that's why you're here too. All right. Um, the next one is time. When, you, when are you going to do your kids' church? How many times you want to do it? Um, are you going to do it every Sabbath? Are you going to do it once a month? Um, there's different reasons why you might do it um, um, more or less. We just happen to pick once a month, and um, our reasoning is because I want all our kids in church. Not especially kids' church, but church, right? Um, And so what we do in our kids' church, we try to mimic what happens in church. Does that make sense? So doing the prayer song, we'll sing the exact same prayer song um, so that if you come to kids' church, and then when you go to the big church, hey, I know that song. So it kind of translates for them. So we're trying to bridge things. But at the same time, we want to make it more interactive for because it's, it's for their level, right? And so um, we'll see here as we go on. Um, so I'm going to come back to that. But um, as we go to our set design, I don't know if, um, you know, sets, set design is a lot of, I, I like to do set designs and stuff like that, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, every single time I, we have a kids' church, I'm setting up. It takes me two hours every single time, and I, have it, I think I have it down now. <laughs> so, um, so I'll just uh, give a little history of how, how we've moved um, our set design um, from the f- initial times, you know, when you used to paint huge pieces of paper and stick them on the wall, and then in the middle of the program, they kind of fall, out, fall down. <laughs> All right, so that didn't work very well. So the next thing we moved is to panels, four by eight panels, um, quarter inch, and two by twos behind them, hinges on the sides, and then we'd go all the way around the room, basically, whatever. And you have doors in them. You can have trap doors, all kind of cool things. That, to me, was after a while, it got too heavy. So right now, if you see um, some of our slides here, um, you'll see that um, we're, we're now using um, fabric. And all I do is do outlet, uh, eyelets in different parts of the room and have cables with um, 
white cloth. So I've used black cloth before, but now we're using white cloth. And the reason why light cloth is, we use um, LED lighting, and we could change the colors per, per different um, kids' church themes. So this particular kids' church, if God is big, we want a lot of color. So we can have different colors on different patterns happening, all just shine on, the, shine on your background, and it's kind of cool. You can shine, shine back behind the stage, forward, and from the front of the stage to, to the, um, the white backdrop. So there's kind of a lot of options you have. Um, and so that's what we're going right now. And it's actually a lot easier to, once you set it up and make it for the first time, you can, you know. And so what happens is when the kids, um, I like the awe moment. You like that? So I want my, our kids, when they come, and guests, when they come to our, the church for the first time, they, they all line up. Doors are closed. They can hear the music. I think they can hear the music. And um, we have one of the leaders in the back there. He's dressed up. And right now we have lab coats on. Um, it's because we're in the lab. And he'll, he'll kind of be a little jester and say, hey, welcome to Kids Church today. Please line up in a straight line. And, and you know, you ever gone to Disneyland and you notice that you have to wait in line all the time? And you, after an hour, you get to go on a, like a 30-second ride? Well, they're very pers- purposeful in, even in their lines, how they have you lined up. You notice that, right? But you're anticipating. You just can't wait to get on that ride, and that's what makes it so much better. If there was no line, you just jump on the ride, like, eh, it's okay, ride. But now that you wait an hour for it, you know, like, now it's super good, right? So we do the same thing. We just do a little anticipation, wait, let the kids kind of calm down, and they're all excited, and we're kind of building them up at the same time, and we say, oh, it's now open. Kids' church is open. Here we go. And they all kind of rush in. They're all excited. You know, they're beaming. They come find their seats. Um, and then we get we get a move on. So um, just on, in saying that, um, we found that sometimes we use chairs and sometimes we don't use chairs. Now, um, if you're like me, I have a hard time getting up off the floor, and I'm Japanese. That's our that's our lifestyle, right? <laughs> but um, we found also though, if you have too many kids, chairs don't work because you can't. There's not there's not enough space. But we also found, though, when kids are kicking each other, you have a different problem. So there's ways to work in that. And uh, when we were in Redlands, we couldn't have any chairs because our room was uh, a little smaller than this room and have 200 kids in there and their parents. I mean, it was a fire hazard. But luckily, the, uh, the fire chief of Redlands was a member of our church. And he just looked the other way, you know. But um, anyways, so they all had to sit on the floor. Um, just, to, just to get in the building. And then we just had one row of chairs in the very back row for people like me that if you got on the floor, you couldn't get up. So that's one thing that you might come across if you want to sit on the floor or sit on chairs. Um, it's not a big deal. If you sit on the floor, my, my uh, advice is use blankets, and then you have particular places. Then you have zones. You can say, okay, this is blue zone, red zone, green zone, whatever zones you want to use for that. All right. If, you, if we do chairs, what we do is... Um, Within the middle of our chairs, um, I use a lot of our junior staff, and they sit in the middle, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. So where every row of kids has a person watching them and helping them through their ministry time. All right. So um, sorry about that. Um, Let's see. Set design. We're on advertising. Um, We're going to skip advertising. Finances. Um, Good luck. Um, we won't talk about finances um, other than that. We do collect offering because uh, we're basically mimicking again what they do in the big church. And we also have the kids pick up offering. So it's their training time. Sometimes the leader of the offering person who uh, will meet with the group before kids' church, pick four kids out and say, okay, would you like to do offering? It'll be our, our junior deacons today. And they're all excited, right? Um, or sometimes we'll do it a different way. Right now they all come down to the front, you know, um, that way, we're teaching our kids that, hey, it's, it's okay to come to the front of the church. Um, and this is your place. And this is your church. You come to the very front of God's throne. So that's what we're teaching them right now. All right. Um, as far as our themes, um, we have an overall theme. And then we have a monthly theme. So if God is big, um, it's for the whole year. Um, a particular Sabbath may be um, how God provides. Um, and then we'll go off of that. And then in our retreat time, we'll actually put out our 10-month schedule. 
So we, we don't do 12 months because um, we save two months of nothing because we have camp meeting, um, Washington Conference camp meeting and whatnot. So in the summer, we take our little break. All right. All right. So um, there, some of the rules, you saw some of the rules we have there. And we have snacks and small groups. Um, let me just hit on that really quick. Um, so um, for you know seven years, I did kids' church where we um, basically did kids' church, snacks, and see you later. Well, um, presently we have a pastor that loves to speak, like Pastor Rojas, and we never get out on time. So, uh, you know, at 12.30, we're still in church, right? Well, try running to kids' church for an hour and a half. How does that work? It's insane. Um, so basically, you, you start from a ministry point of view, and you end up at a, like a babysitting type of thing. Yeah, you're just trying to survive, right? So we said, this is not working. We have to change this. Let's try something that we've never done before or never heard of before. And let's see what, it, what, what happened. So we said, what, what are we going to do? Well, um, we need to give the kids a pause in the middle. So what we do, our first half is our, is our spiritual segment where we're focusing on spiritual matters, scripture reading, Bible story, um, offering. All right. And then we'll have a break. The train broke down, and so now we got to stop. Or we got to, you know, put more was it run on diesel in it, right? So we stopped the train. And then we said, okay, now I want all the four-year-olds to go with your counselor who's sitting there in the row, right? And they go out, they grab their snack, they, they sit out in the hallway, and then that leader will have a card and read with them and actually go over certain points that we're going through that, that particular kids' church. So it's not time out there doing nothing. Make sense? But it's, it's interactive time. This is a time that they can talk back in a small setting, and also have some snacks. Um, so we thought it wouldn't work, you know, but we said we have no choice, let's try it. So after that, um, you can hear the whistle blow from the, ki um, from, the, from the train, and they're like, oh, it's time to get, you know, get on board again. So they all come back in, and then we start the second half of the segment. The second half is more active. So we would have puppets, for example, animals, for example, um, and things like that that are just more interactive and so that the kids, and singing again, um, so that the kids just, and you know what? We can go, last kids' church, I think we went an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> and, and we still had the kids at the very end. You can still look and see all their eyes. They're still focused, even if they were a four-year-old. And I'm like, wow, that's really amazing. And that's hard to do, you know. So um, there's an idea for you. If your kid's program has to go longer, there's two ways of doing that. Is you, we, we have all our kids meet in church first because I want church, our big church, is the main with all our families coming together. We meet there first. We have our announcements, and then we split. That way, if there's any visitors that are coming, um, if, if you split early or just go straight to kids' church, they have no idea we're, what happened to all the kids in this church, right? So, and that's how we do it. And then we say, hey, just walk softly in our sanctuary as we leave. And sometimes I'll have our staff come to the front of the church and do a corny uh, promo, promo for whatever we're doing that, that Sabbath. Um, and then I ask the parents to do this one thing. As you pick up your kids today, please ask them this question. Here's our theme. Here's a question to ask them. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a segment in their lives for an hour and a half, once a month. But their parents also need to carry that, you know, the, you know what I'm saying, and continue the journey with them and ask them the question, what did you learn? Why did you learn that? And how did you, you know, you see what I'm saying? So that's part of it too. So it doesn't just, it's just not like, oh, my kids go to kids' church, they come back, and it's, that's it, we're done. No, we want our parents to be active and participating in their spiritual lives. All right, so... Um, where was I? Snacks, small groups. All right. So our small group th time is doing our snack time. And um, we meet with those leaders and say, here are the specific questions and how it should be done. Um, and just have fun with those kids. Get to know their names. Um, uh, listen to their prayers, you know. Um, and then, but that's that. So, um, oh, let me go back here. So if you want to, if you have a 60-minute window and you don't want to have your snacks right in the middle, Sometimes you can let out later. So in other words, dismiss later um, in, in, a, in, in your service, and then you can schedule it that way if your speaker 
ends always at a certain time. But if you like us, we don't know when our speaker is going to end, so we, we kind of just go however long we want to go. I don't mind going long for kids' church now, and, and so let's say the big church lets out. I don't mind the parents coming because I actually want them to see what happens in their church. This particular church that I'm in, uh, most of the parents do not come. So when all 50 kids come, all 50 kids are coming. And you're, um, so we do have a rule that says if you're, I don't know what it says, like three and under, you have to have an um, adult with you. Um, so that doesn't always apply, you know, but whatever. Uh, we don't reject them anyways. So that's what we like. Um, target age, um, I. Target age, select um, uh, a learning level. So as you design your kids' church program, you're going to have to have a target age. Otherwise, you're going to do a shotgun. And you're just going to blast everybody, and you might miss still. So we have a very specific target age and say, uh, right, right now, it's a nine-year-old. At a nine-year-old level, what are they learning? How are they learning? And um, what are they memorizing in Sabbath schools? And then let's reinforce that. Make sense? So um, if you and so them uh, different years, we move that age so that um, we can target different subgroups within our church. So um, usually we move down, not up, because um, otherwise you just keep following the same group. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So um, let's go on to our worship service. All right, in our worship, in our worship service. Um, these are all the elements you see there that we use and sometimes we uh, don't use. But for the most part, in every worship service, you're going to have songs, scripture reading, prayer. We have a prayer song. We have a, um, a theme song that we're using. Um, we've done, done um, themes with animals, without anim animals. We've done videos. Right now, um, for the last two years, or maybe even longer than that, three years, we do animals. And I'll show you some pictures of animals. But animals are always very captivating for our kids. Right now we're doing God is Big. And when we bring in big animals, it's way cool. Or we bring in really, really small animals, you know, just for contrast. You know, saying God is really big in this small way. Um, so um, anyways, so those elements, every single year I just get all these elements. And I just say, here are all the elements I think we want to do. Is there any more elements that we want in our worship service? Now let's put it in order, right, how we want to run and design our service. Now, every year, it sometimes ends up the same way as the last year. But that's not the point. The point is, how do we get there every single year? And what are we trying to achieve in our blocks? So we have two blocks. So what are we trying to achieve in our first block? What are we trying to achieve in our second block? And so we're being very deliberate in our service, also thinking, what is our, church, our bigger church service with the adults? What are they doing in their service? so that we may match with them, and so that our kids, we're bridging that gap with them. All right? Um, that's about it for that. Um, let's see. Number four is Children's Church Ministry Team. Um, our practice times, we, have, we practice uh, just before um, our kids' church. So Friday evening before, we go through our whole service with our, um, our ministry team. Um, also, we have a retreat once a year that I mentioned earlier, and we try and do evaluations. So one thing that's neat about our church, we have potlucks every single Sabbath. So once our kids' church is done, we go eat, and I bring that team back together, and we say, how did it go? What did you like? What you didn't like? Um, we need to focus on here. We had an issue with this particular kid. How are we going to um, not have that issue again? Uh, or who needs to talk to that parent? You know, things like that. Just kind of touch bases. Um, and... Some kids' church, man, you're like, wow, this is amazing. It's, it runs perfect. Some kids' church is really flat, and you're like, what in the world happened today? You know what I'm talking about? Have you had those moments? Um, and it's just after many, many years, you'll see that happening, and um, we just say, well, we always want to improve. And the other thing is I always say um, it's not always about the things that we do. It's, it's all, always all about who's there worshiping with us. And sometimes we can... Um, get so tied up into the technical things. Um, I love technical things like the cool stuff. If it's smoke in the room or certain, you know, um, things go flying th in the sideways, you know, all those cool stuff. Right? I mean, it's really fun, right? But what, it has, what does that have to do with God sometimes? So if you don't have that bridge very well, 
well, you know, it's really cool, but at the end you're like, well, that's kind of flat. I couldn't, I couldn't sense the kids feeling the spirit. Um, and we get that. I get their message back a lot of times through their singing. You notice that? Right? Um, you, go to, you go to the mission field. Who sings better, mission, mission field or North America? Mission field, right? I mean, they may be way out of tune, but it doesn't matter. They're excited about Jesus. I mean, you can you hear it, right? You can hear it before you even get to church. Now, maybe I shouldn't push any of you really bad. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, and it's the same with our, with our kids. When they meet Jesus, they are excited about singing. It, it's a natural element. And they love to sing. And by teaching them new songs, by teaching them Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit, guess what? Throughout the week, they're singing that song, right? And they're, and they're going over and over. And their parent, who may not be an Adventist now, or a church member is now learning Christian music through their kids, right? So Kids Church is a great bridge from your VBS, your or VBX, sorry, um, where your community is coming to your church. Now, right after we do a VBS, we'll go right into Kids Church the next week so that it happens, those kids can now flow into your program, and then it starts, they'll come once a month, and then pretty soon their parents are like, well, I, I kind of trust you guys. You know, uh, maybe I should try and try your big church. Um, and so that's where we're, our philosophy is. It's an it's a evangelistic tool to reach kids. And you'll probably agree with me that if you want people to stick in your church, get to their kids. Would you agree? So for new converts, if their kids are highly excited about your church, they're not leaving. And that's what you want also in your church. You want a growing, excited, you know, snot nose running, crazy kids, you know, um, and, you know, everyone yelling, don't run in the sanctuary, but, hey, those are kids. And we're all going to grow together. They keep us humble, don't they? And uh, sometimes I scratch my head. I'm like, why am I doing this? But um, it's great. All right. We can turn the page. You guys have any questions? Yes, Pastor Victor. Okay, a couple questions. In our service, do we have live music? Life music? Oh, live music. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, we actually don't use a whole lot of outside resources. I use my team a lot. And um, each of them, um, what happens is when you use your team to develop things, um, it's fun because all of a sudden you get this great or new idea, uh, how we're going to do a scripture reading or how we're going to do a particular um, worship uh, element, and we all get excited about it. Um, and so... It takes time. So every, ele every single element that you run in your kids' church or your children's church, you know, um, be very deliberate in why you want to run it, how you want to run it, and then be very consistent in doing it the same every single time, and then our, your kids will start catching on to that, you know. Um, and then it's really, it's really cool. So, um, yeah, I'm all, I'm all into um, if you can't do live music, you can't do live music. But if you have talent in your church and you, you, can, you can do that, do live music because um, it's, a lot, it's a lot better. What happens is when you go from canned music to live music, it, it's hard too, unless you're super good at live. You know what I'm saying? But typically, we go live all the way through. Um, and so, like, you know, um, today, you know, my daughter will play. Um, we have, you know, the cajon will play. We'll also have a, a keyboard. Um, so let me give you a, a tip, all right? Let me give you a, a real easy tip. So, um, right now in this room, if there's dead space, you hear like, if I stop talking, there's like this dead air, right? Some people get nervous about that dead air. You know what I'm talking about? Um, I do, because I don't like hearing myself talk. So, what we do sometimes, we'll play um, 
They're called pads. Have you heard of those? Um, Christian pads. And so we'll play um, a pad in C or p pad in D. So whoever's on the piano can pick it up right away. You can play right on top of it, stay in the same key, and you're fine. If you stop playing, you hear this, it's kind of this low hum. But it just kind of relaxes the kids. It's kind of like, it's almost like having blue light in your room. You know, it just kind of relaxes you and gets rid of that dead space, so to speak. So um, that's one of the keys that um, we do. So um, you notice, like today, doing the puppets, you heard that background music, right? So we found by having background music with the puppets, it also bridges, bridges some things. And if you notice, everything in Hollywood, there's background music in all your, all your movies. There's reasons why they do that, right? So we don't use the same reasons they do, but anyways. So that's, those are some, some bridges that we found that are very helpful. Another question, sorry. I think you're right on track in how, how, what you guys were doing. But your main question was, how do we get our teenagers involved into our younger kids' programs? And having them excited about that, too. So that's part of about um, bringing um, or investing in your leaders, your younger leaders. right? How do you do that? And so there's different ways and techniques. But whatever technique that you're using or way you're using, just be consistent in doing it and rely on them. Place your trust in them. So I want my kids to come to practice, those, those teenagers, right? And then I want them to sit in this particular row. Sometimes I'll say specific, you know, specifically, I want you to watch this particular kid because this kid drives me bananas. And so I want you to sit right next to that kid. And all of a sudden, that kid's church for that particular kid changes. No behavior problems because an uh, older kid loves them, puts their arm around them, says, hey, Look at that, you know, and just goes through the process with them. And so, but at the same time, you know, as our kids grow older, some kids want to still come to kids' church, and you're still like 16, right? And you're like, oh, what? Um, okay. Um, yeah. So what do you do? So we have that problem too. And so we're looking at different options that we were thinking of starting our own youth church. But, you know, um, that's a, another Another big issue and be, be, another big question of how we want to do that. But um, so th those are some real issues, and those are fun issues because that means you're now growing. You actually went through your your first generation of kids. Now you're in your second or third generation of kids, and um, but your older generation wants to hang on with you. So you can put them in leadership. We put ours in, in leadership, and so a lot of them are playing instruments. A lot of them are doing some of the acting for the skits um, and participating in, in that way. Yes. So our age group for our children's church, if you're three and under, you have to come with your parent, and um, we stop at 12. All in one room. Now, are there older kids in 12? Yes, because we can't kick them out. We don't, we don't say, well, sorry, you're too old. You're out here. We don't do that. So, Yes. That's why we have one target age. That we're, Here's our target. We're targeting nine. So that's our target. We're very specific on that target. So if you just happen to be 12, well, um, you're going you're gonna to be spoken to like a nine-year-old for this session, you know, for that year, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, otherwise, um, we'll be bouncing all over the place, and, you know. And obviously, every single um, uh, person who's doing an element may have different ways of doing it. And so it's, um, you know, sometimes I don't, shoot very well at nine-year-olds, and so I might be talking to a 12-year-old for that particular Sabbath because, you know, I wasn't thinking very well. Yes? Do 
do we have um, problems with older kids being disruptive? Of course not. We have angels at our church. <laughs> like all you guys do. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we have problems like that. So what do we do? We just stand up with the mic and say, you back there in the blue, get out of here. No. <laughs> um, that's hard. So first of all, we want to identify why is there a problem? Is it a programming problem? If we can correct the program you know, by our program, we do that the first thing, you know, for, you know first of all. So if, did we run a segment, an element too long where the kids got bored? So if you notice, and in, in, if you look at this, our element list, we have a whole bunch of elements. So the idea is every five to three minutes, it's changing. It's changing. And if you come to our church, you'll see that our puppets are over here, our main stage is over here, our acting stage is over here, our band's over here, and our animal's over there. So they're like, they're always moving around. They're always moving their head. You know, they're just going like this, right? And that just gives different views and different angles for them so they're not just in one position like, uh, you know. So, so we we're, we're constantly want to move their eyes, their thoughts from, from standing up to kneeling down, to singing verbally, to being quiet. Right now we have a little meter, and it says, so we have an expectation. So it says, um, we have like a Vanna White, she goes on stage with this meter, and it says, nice and loud, cheer, you know, and then, and then over here it says, super quiet, right? Um, like a, like a church, mi- church mouse. So I think it's really corny, but um, the kids love it. And then we just kind of move that meter around. And so we go, oh, look at the meter, it moved. You know, and they're like, oh, psh, psh, you know, right? And um, yeah. Yeah, and so um, what we do is we so, we call something on the box. I have a little box that the kids, if I see a, a new member, a new kid that I haven't seen before in our kids' church, I'll say, hey, um, what's your name? And, hey, Johnny, come on up here. Where are you from? I ask them a bunch of questions. And, hey, thank you for coming to kids' church today. We have a special gift for you. Um, and so um, next time you come, um, bring someone else, and uh, we'll have them come on the box. And typically they're really shy in doing that. But it's really cool. They think it's so amazing that they can come in front of the church, right? And, but it's their church. So they come in the very front. They stand in the box if they're really short. And we just ask them some questions. And um, we, we laugh together. We have fun together. We even pray together. And then they're off. And then we do like three of them, you know, that particular Sabbath. All right. So if you see this page, it says sample on here, on those white lines there, you can actually, if you wanted to, get your, if you picked out your team already, uh, and you say, okay, here we go, uh, and just fill all those uh, white lines in, and you say, well, I don't want um, all the elements here, just what I want for our elements. Um, I don't want any animals. I want um, no offering. Um, I want a Bible skit. I want prayer. Um, and you just, how and when do you do that? And then on the last page there, it's um, who's in charge of your order of elements and uh, who's in charge. So who's going to do that element for that particular Sabbath? So... I used to do it at one particular kids' church that every Sabbath that uh, a person, a different person would be doing the el- different elements. I don't do that anymore. One person would do always that scripture reading for the whole year. Now, I mean, she's in charge of the scripture reading. That doesn't mean she'll be doing it necessarily, but um, she's the one that's creating that time. And so what happens is then we're finding that um, she is, she has in her mind, this is where she wants to go in the whole year in our theme. And then she can drive to meet that versus every single time for you change it, it'd be a stop and go type of process. You, you know what I'm saying? So um, that there's continuity and then our learning is greater. So um, also in our, our skits, um, in pretty much everything that we do, we keep with that one person. Um, and then after the year, I'll ask them, hey, let's switch it. Now let's switch it out. You know, let's try something different that you haven't, maybe it's out of your comfort zone a little bit. And let's try something else. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so in kids church, uh, <laughs> uh, we bring in um, animals. So there's a Great Dane. And uh, here, he, I don't know, he's that boa, he's a boa constrictor. He's that snake. Uh, it's, uh, it's about a 10 foot six-inch boa constrictor. It was pretty cool. <coughs> um, 
And so you, you can kind of see our set. See the set behind here? See, all the, see the white behind there? And then we put everything in front of that. Um, and that particular, we're using white. Here's a, um, isn't that a camel? There a camel coming. So, um, you know, in the Northwest, even in Southern California, and here's a fox, um, you can find really cool animals. It just takes a lot of doing sometimes, and it takes a lot of money, but um, whatever, right? Um, so we, we got some, we bring goats all the time. Um, you know, we haven't brought a pig in, but um, let's see. One of the most exotic animals that I ever brought in was in, in Redlands. We brought in a, um, a baby lion. Yeah, that thing was crazy, too. I mean, it was, you could hear it a mile. We also brought in an uh, albino 24-foot long python. He was actually on the Jay Leno show. And it was really funny because um, kids' church is packed, right? Can you imagine? It's packed, packed, packed. We bring that snake out. He was in this, in this big old barrel. And he was actually right in front of the stage. No one knew what was in this. I mean, I knew what was in there, but no one else knew, right? As soon as we bring it out, all the kids move forward, and all the parents jump back, and you see this big old divide. <laughs> it was just hilarious. And this snake was, you know, from that wall to here. I mean, we had all these kids line up, and they're holding this snake. It was cool. So um, you know, we brought in monkeys um, in certain states. We can't bring in monkeys in Washington. We've tried and tried and tried. Um, so, but for the most part, different type of animals. Kids are always interested in animals. We talk about the animals. We, know, we get to know their behavior patterns, um, and just more, just kind of like animal education. So in, in, in the God is Big theme is, um, it's really cool to see why God creates certain animals a certain way. And so you just illustrate that, and you show that with their kids. And then what we do is um, the kids walk up, touch the animal, and then they get hand sanitizer and make a circle, go back around. So everyone gets to touch the animal. I mean, so all our parents are like, what animal did you guys bring today? Because, I mean, you know, not everyone gets to touch a fox, right? Or touch a donkey or you touch a mule or whatever, you know. So that's kind of cool. That's part of our kids' church. Any other questions? Yes. What? How long is our kids' church program? It's an hour and a half. Not by – that's not the ideal time. <laughs> I think the ideal time is probably – you know, 50 minutes. And then I wouldn't do the break in the middle. Yes. So we start with the divine service right after announcements. We split, and then we go. Question in back. Yes. Yes, I'm the pastor for that church. If the pastor's not kid-friendly, you know, bend him over and, and say, hey, this is how, how it is to be kid-friendly. <laughs> so, um, you know, you're, you have a really good point. Um, if you're a youth pastor, a youth person, it's a great place to be. Because whatever you want, the older generation say, whatever you want, just tell us, and we'll just give it to you. Because we don't want to go down there where you're at and, and deal with what issues you have. Right? So if you're a youth, when I started as a youth pastor, it was great because the senior pastor, I'll, ask him, I'll have to say, hey, you want to come help me? What do you want? More money? Great. Thank you very much. You know, it was great. Yeah, so I'm an associate pastor. And so to be honest with you, to, to be a senior pastor, you, it's really hard to be a, a leader and run something like this because um, you're very consistent in what you know, our team is. But as I would say, you know, you can run a kids' church without your pastor. Have a really good core team, and you'll make the hugest difference in your community. So our present kids' church, when I was, you know, we started like 25 kids, 30 kids, and we went for, I don't know, three, three years. And all of a sudden, it bumped. I, I mean, I, could, I don't really know why it bumped, but all of a sudden now, right now, we always have minimum 50 kids. Sometimes we have, you know, 80 kids. Um, and it's, I don't know if that's a, you know, you always want to get bigger or whatever. Um, when you get my age, you don't really care about the numbers. All you care about is, was God present in the room? Um, but you realize the numbers because what you're trying to say is, if I had 80 kids, I had 30 more than I, I don't know, who were those 30? Those must be visitors? Right? And then I'm interested now, right? Because I want them to keep coming back. I want, the, I want to know who their mothers and fathers are. I want to, you know, know what their names are and whatnot. Yes?
Out of the box question. Uh oh. Have you had the adults um, experience kids church? Um, in this particular church that I'm at, no. Um, we haven't brought our kids church to our main church. Now, um, when I was in Redlands, a particular church in Bakersfield actually wanted us to do their divine service. So <laughs> this is insane. I moved everything I owned in Redlands to Bakersfield and went for one Sabbath. Our whole set, our whole lighting, our whole sound. I mean, it was crazy. I never did it again. <laughs> and, um, but it was a lot of fun, you know. And, our, and um, I mean, it was, it was a lot of work, just a lot of work trying to get up to speed in a matter of seconds, you know, in a matter of hours. Um, and, but what our theme, our idea was, hey, um, God has given us a gift uh, of doing kids' church. And it's so fun and exciting to see these kids just grow. So you know what? I want that church next to me to do it too because I don't want their kids to come over here. I mean, I like their kids, but you know what? And especially in um, Loma Linda, you have a lot of church hopping. And I didn't like that. I didn't want people just to move because something was better on this side of the street. So to diminish that, I would say to all the church leaders, hey, let's meet. I'll tell you exactly what we do for our kids' church, and please start one over at your place. That way I can get the community kids in my church, not your kids, because I don't have enough room. My, my building's small, right? That was kind of our theory there. So um, up here in Northwest, probably you don't have that issue as much. You know, your, your church is much farther away. All right. Any other questions? Yes. So um, I just went to the jail and uh, <laughs> actually, uh, let me show you our team. Uh, the one next to the house, the log house. See that one? Should be near the end. Um, our our team. I think we have five families. Very small team. When someone doesn't show up, I feel it. That's it. So there's our team. That's on our retreat. All right. We have some old people there. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm aged people. Um, and we have some young, a young couple over there. Um, so all different ba uh, backgrounds. All different backgrounds. But um, so it's kind of fun because now these guys are my real personal friends. So they always bug me for whatever. And um, I bug them for whatever. We, we eat a lot of times. Um, we go out to eat just for fun. Not talking about anything about kids' church. Um, we just spend a lot of time together as, as our team has grown over all these many years. Um, but the greatest thing is um, they have hearts for our kids. And um, um, a lot of them had their own kids and had their own issues with kids. And so we continue to pray for their kids as well as, as they grow up and become um, mature adults as well. All right. I think we're coming to a close. One more question. Yes. So all the elements are driven by an adult in that particular area. But as far as who's on stage, they will pick. So sometimes in our skits, our, our person might write all the skits, but you'll never see her in front of stage. You'll see her in the back. You'll see her coaching the kids, talking through them, stopping in practice, saying, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again. Um, but then you won't see her in front. And sometimes um, you'll see them in front and showing this is the way we lead, and this is now you follow. So there's different ways that we, that we do it, and um, every leader does it a different way sometimes, so it's great. And also sometimes we have interaction. So um, like uh, the guy before, he had all those kind of cool things. We'll bring kids up to help us participate in that. Um, even in our lab right now, I always bring a kid up and, and dress them all up in the lab coat and you know, whatnot and say, okay, um, what do we do here in the lab? You know, and, and we go, go through lab experiments like that with them. So we're always trying to be interactive with our kids because um, we're always cognizant of the idea. It's called kids' church, <laughs> not adult church, right? Um, so we want our kids to be in the front as well. All right. I think... You guys are all ready to go start your own kids' church? All right, so if you can write your names down, and um, I will come and check and make sure that in your church um, you guys are going. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. But let me tell you, if you want to make a legacy in your church, this is where it begins. And just spending time, a special time. Church time is the most sacred hour of the seven-day week, that one hour. How much will it be when we do it just for our kids? Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunities of serving you. We thank you for just um, reminding us that your children are so important. And um, as they come with all different issues in life, every Sabbath, we can pause with them and remind them of your great glory. So, Lord, I just pray for each one here as they begin a new journey or if they are renewing that journey in Kids Church with you, Lord, I just pray that you may encourage them, support them, if it's financially or just encouraging them to find their team. Um, Lord, you're open, to, you're open and, and provide amazing miracles. And so, um, Lord, we just thank you for church. Church with our kids, church with our families. And as we graduate our kids into the kingdom, Lord, we're waiting for that church in heaven. Thank you again for um, this time, for I pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, thank you very much.